So folks, this is a clip of Elon Musk. So he's really happy today. You know why? He just got that $48 billion pay package that was approved by Tesla. So he's he's sort of like on a high. And it's sort of like Papa Murphy's today to Elon that just came out with a new pizza because he's out here talking about humanoids. Elon's got this idea, and I don't doubt that it's going to come true, right? I just don't know what the timeline is, but he's saying that they're going to be producing humanoids and they think that they're going to have two to one humanoids versus humans. <laughs> oh, geez. I hope these people aren't, you know, uh, putting a strain on our social services and, you know, uh, using the potties and drinking water, which thank God they're humanoids, right? Because I mean, just to have two to one to the human population folks would be a disaster, but here's what he said. So, you know, just Keep it in mind, you know, he's a little high on, on things right now. So here he is talking about humanoids. Well, it's going to want one, like literally everyone. Um, and, and then there'll be obviously uh, uh, robots in industry um, making stuff. And mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think the ratio of human robots stuff. to humans will, will probably be at least two to one, something like that. One to one for sure. So, which means like somewhere okay. on the order of ten billion uh, humanoid robots, mm. um, maybe maybe twenty or thirty. Hmm. Um, and so then it's like, okay, well, let's say, you know, you, you kind of make. Let's say the, the build rate is. I, I think the build rate will be probably something ultimately like a billion a year, humanoid robots. <laughs> like actually. God. Um, and if Tesla just has a ten percent share of that, and it might be. A lot more than 10%. Um, and there's, you know, who make like 100 million Optimus units a year. I just, I mean, for reference, the auto industry is roughly 100 million vehicles per year. Um, so, the, you know, sort of similar ballpark, at least within an order of magnitude. And I, I, I think we could make one for a cost of maybe, at, at, at really high scale of about ten thousand dollars, it's it's smaller, it's, it's be less expensive than a car. So, uh, and, and I think if you sell it for sell for twenty thousand dollars, something this is at large scale volume. Um, Tesla would basically make about a trillion dollars of profit a year from that. So, Ooh. yeah. So, you know, I've got questions here. First of all, what is the venue that he's recording this in? He's on stage. He's got, you know, like a regular setup here with people in the audience. But but then it sounds like Miss Peggy's nursery school, you know, going on in the background. Like, are there 15 or 20 preschoolers just on the other side of the, you know, the, the man behind the screen there? You know, are, what's going on? Um, beyond that, folks, I just want to know on these humanoids, who's going to be doing the programming? Who? 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 I mean, this, these are important questions because things in the past 10 years around here, as you all know, have gone a little haywire with common sense. Who's going to be doing the programming? I mean, what if I order one of these things and I get a, a conservative humanoid? My God, <laughs> Jesus, I'm taking it back. <laughs> this, this, this thing is conservative. I don't want it. You know, or, or what if, you know, what if, what, what if a Southern Baptist, who, by the way, they, they just voted that, you know, IVF frozen babies are people, again, in their conference. You know, what, what if they get a, a gay humanoid, you know, my God, <laughs> he's grooming my kids. I mean, what if somebody wants a loud MAGA humanoid, you know? <sighs> Yeah, or what do you what do you do if if you can't have a loud human maga maga humanoid, and you're in the supermarket and they uh, they they sort of have like this uh, personality that's not quite programmed right, you know, and they're they're shouting out things, you know, pro Trump stuff. Um, you know, I've got so many questions about this, and can these things be hacked? This is what we want to know. I mean, can these things be hacked? And and all of a sudden, are they going to turn into like little Chucky dolls at midnight running around the house while you're sleeping with, with a cake knife, you know, trying to, trying to find you? 
um, you know, my God, Tesla, this thing turned into a Chucky doll that tried to attack me last night. Oh, did you download the update? Ah, oh. <laughs> I guess not. I mean, there's so many questions about this, folks. I mean, it all sounds good, and I get it. You know, you're all happy and all this kind of stuff uh, about what's going on, and you got that that pay raise. But come on, let's. let's... Some of us have got some questions here. So, folks, um, switching gears now to Ben Shapiro. I just have to play this clip for you. I'm obviously venting today a little bit. I've got to play this clip for you, and then I have a question afterwards. Have a listen to this. So this is, um, no, this is Charlie Kirk. I'm sorry, it is not Ben Shapiro. I was going to have a Ben Shapiro clip, but I, I gave it the boot. Uh, but this is Charlie Kirk. Yeah, and it, so the, it's very simple. So how do you love somebody? You love them so much to correct their error. Yeah. And so let's just, you know, take the pride conversation out because people think it's an identification. Well, it's not. It's just sexual behavior. But it's if you meet an alcoholic or you meet a drug addict, do you affirm their struggle? No. You say you're better than this. Let's get you free from that. Let's get you free from that activity. Let's get you free from that activity. Okay, so he's comparing someone who's gay to, you know, someone that's that's a drug addict or, you know, has a problem with alcohol. And I just wonder, you know, because gays have been around since since the beginning of time. I, I just wonder how that conversation would work on someone who is Cro Magnum. You know, it's like, let's get you free from that. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Come on, Charlie. You can do better than that better than that. I know you can. So folks, this whole thing with Donald Trump. Um, he's turning 78 tomorrow, by the way, Donald Trump is, let's be sure to wish him a happy birthday, 78 years old, Donald Trump, you know, given the concerns about the age thing, you know, I'm sure that's going to be kind of a low key. I don't want a cake. I don't want a cake. Ah, I'm not celebrating this year. I don't want to do it, but he was, um, in Washington and, um, and some of the senators and congressmen just got all all oh, jittery with the whole, you know, so excited and giddy. I want to play you a clip of that. But before we get there, uh, there's always somebody that's raining on the parade. And today it's Paul Ryan, folks. So remember Paul Ryan, the previous Speaker of the House? Well, he said this the other day, and uh, he got some people upset. And I'm, I'll show you who he got upset, but here he is. I do think character is, is, is a really important issue. If you put yourself above the Constitution, as he has done... But what happened? What I, turned, think, what I think that makes you unfit for office. Was it the whole January 6th thing? Uh, I, that's a part of it. I think it's a contribution of factors, but I think it really is just character at the end of the day. And the fact that if you're willing to put yourself above the Constitution, an oath you swear when you take office, in federal office, whether it's president or a member of Congress, you swear an oath to the Constitution. And if you're willing to suborn it to yourself, I think that makes you unfit for office. Does it? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Man, you know, back when he was in office, I really didn't like him, but that's the way it goes with me, with most conservatives, you know, but my God, I just want to give him a hug because it's like, where have you been? Come back, please come back. And folks, so Troy Nels got wind of that, right? You know, Troy Nels, the congressman from Texas, I think he is. And here's what he said. Paul Ryan, you're a piece of garbage. You're a piece of garbage, and you, we should kick you out of the party. For Paul Ryan to say he's not voting for Donald Trump, that's the problem with some of our Republicans. It's guys like that. Don't go spouting your mouth off and saying you're a conservative. You're spitting in the face of the leader of our party, Donald Trump. I mean, grow up a little bit. <laughs> grow up a little bit. I got something to ask about this. Um, I know a... I know Minnesotan voice when I hear it, Troy Nels. I know you're not from Texas. You know, I can tell spouting off and, and doing stuff like that, talking like, you know, you're, you're not, you're not from Texas. Where'd, where'd you come from? But, um, you got to grow up a little bit, right? Troy Nels. I mean, that's, that's, he's sort of defining a cult while he's saying you got to grow up a little bit. Interesting stuff. And folks, um, then there was after that meeting. So Trump came to Washington today, Washington, and had a grand time. Everybody loved him, of course. And, you know, heels of the birthday. Shh, shh. Don't bring it up. 
And then there was this senator that was just giddy after the whole Trump thing, folks. Have a listen to this. And you know what Trump meetings are like. He's electric. He's got an incredible fastball. Um, and I, I think that it was just exciting after all he'd been through how strong this man is. I've never seen someone be able to take all the heat that he's taken and come in there ready to lead. It took him about two minutes. I thought of you when he said this. Drill, baby, drill. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. And that's the key to inflation. So he just talked about what we've been talking about. How about tax cuts? Absolutely. we got to do the tax cuts. Oh, my God. What do you want? Did he, like, pass out some, you know, little candies or something, you know, that had a little something in them? I mean, this guy is just really, really just oscillating with excitement here over Trump. And, ooh, he's just going to go home and, ah, you know, he just can't get over it. Folks, I got, you know, the thing about Donald Trump is, you know, he said after all he's been through, you know, the conviction and all of this kind of stuff. Well, the man's turning 78. He doesn't he doesn't care. He doesn't care because he can delay things long enough. He's he's figured out the bank balance and the amount of lawyers that he has, and he can he can delay things until the end of times for him, right? So Donald Trump, as we know, will not face any justice because he's he's calculated the bank account versus the lawyers and the expenses and you know let's not forget about MAGA and he's figured out that he can keep this whole thing whatever should come his way he can keep it in motion tied up in courts and it will never throw him in prison folks I mean that's why he is like he is you know that he has no fear because he can he can do it yeah who cares and tomorrow's his birthday till next time folks